My name is Dr. Maria Trakis and I'm a physical therapist at Performance Spine and Sports Medicine and today I'll be talking about Parkinson's disease. The objectives of this talk are to basically define what Parkinson's disease is and discuss some of the cardinal signs and symptoms, some of the risk factors, how a medical doctor will make a diagnosis, the medical and surgical treatments, as well as the role of physical therapy. So what is Parkinson's disease? It's a de degenerative disorder of the central nervous system. It's one of the most common nervous system disorders in the elderly. Most cases occur after the age of 50, with the average onset being about 62, and people over 60 years of age have a 2-4% to likelihood of developing the disease. So Parkinson's does affect both men and women, however men are one and a half times more likely to develop the disease. Symptoms are a direct result of death, death of cells in the brain that create dopamine. Most cases are idiopathic and rarely have an identifiable cause. Some atypical cases are genetic. So what is the role of dopamine in the brain? Basically, it's a chemical that sends signals to nerve cells, so it essentially helps to control muscle movement. It plays a major role in motor skills or movement and mental focus. Without it, nerve cells cannot properly send messages, which thereby leads to a loss of muscle function. Dopamine is produced by several areas of the brain, one being substantia nigra, which is the area primarily affected by Parkinson's. So what are some of the risk factors? There are some genetic factors um, that may play a role in the onset of Parkinson's, and certainly having a family member with Parkinson's disease does increase your risk. In terms of environmental factors, Patients that are exposed to herbicides or pesticides are at a higher risk. Those that live in rural areas, particularly agricultural workers or those who drink private well water, and also those who do not or who do smoke tobacco actually have a decreased likelihood of developing Parkinson's. So what are some of the symptoms? Early signs of the disease, of the disease process are movement related. So they typically include resting tremors that look kind of like pill rolling, like someone's rolling a pill between their fingers, <clears throat> rigidity or stiffness within the muscles, slowness of movement, so difficulty, difficulty initiating, terminating movement, or changing directions. People also have difficulties with balance and walking, and also a loss or decrease in fine motor dexterity. So some additional symptoms, typically the patient will present with this very forward bent posture. <clears throat> Their speech is slower and quieter, more monotone, and they do also often have autonomic dysfunction, such as low blood pressure or dizziness when getting up from a chair or out of bed, sweating or drooling, and lack of body temperature control. Some other symptoms may include anxiety, stress or tension, confusion, dementia, depression, fainting, hallucinations, and memory loss. So how does someone get diagnosed with Parkinson's? Basically, it's based on medical history, symptoms, and physical findings. The symptoms initially are difficulty, difficult to assess in the early stages of the disease, and there's no diagnostic imaging that can diagnose Parkinson's. Typically, MRI and CT scans may be needed in order to rule out other diagnoses with similar symptoms. So there's also a drug challenge test, which basically is a doctor gives a patient levodopa and will assess a patient's response to it. So what are some treatment options? There's medicine and rehabilitation. Within rehabilitation, there's physical therapy, occupational therapy, as well as speech and swallow therapy, and lifestyle changes, as well as surgical options. So in terms of medical treatment, there is no known cure for Parkinson's. The goal of the treatment is basically to control symptoms by increasing the levels of dopamine in the brain. Medicines do typically wear off at certain points during the day. The types of medicines, dosages, the time between the dosages, and the way that the medicine is administered may have to be changed as the disease progresses. Eventually, symptoms may not respond to drug treatment. <clears throat> in terms of Rehab, physical therapy is um, a very integral part of a patient's life and it can basically enable a patient to compensate for changes that are brought about by Parkinson's. So some compensatory strategies in terms of learning new movement techniques, strategies that help to increase their safety and decrease a patient's risk of falls, 
family caregiver training and also the recommendation of an assistive device, either a cane, a walker, whatever it is that makes the patient safe. Physical therapy can help with balance problems, any muscle weakness or incoordination, fatigue, pain, and also safety and efficiency during walking. A physical therapist will typically educate a patient with regard to exercises and stretches that they can perform at home, ways to maximize their functional mobility, also increasing their safety and their quality of life. The current research does show that with a strengthening and stretching, pro strengthening and stretching program, that this can basically improve walking speed, balance, and participation in activities of daily living. Some additional services that a patient may require are occupational therapy. Occupational therapists can help with activities of daily living, self-care activities such as grooming, dressing, bathing, and also some fine motor activities like buttons, zippers, typing, and writing, and they can also be helpful in terms of any visual changes. Some patients with Parkinson's may also require swallow or speech therapy. The same way that muscles in other parts of the body can get weak, so can the muscles for swallowing. And so most patients can benefit from exercises that are geared towards strengthening those muscle groups. In terms of speech, <clears throat> sometimes over time speech may become more difficult to understand and it's harder for the patient to communicate. And so speech therapy would be great in those instances. So when conservative measures are not successful or don't adequately help patients, there are some surgical procedures that do destroy areas of the brain that are associated with symptoms. Because it's irreversible, it's typically less used than another option called deep brain stimulation in which electrical stimulators are placed in specific areas of the brain to help control movement. There's also some research with regard to clinical trials and stem cell transplants that's currently been being carried out. So in conclusion, Parkinson's is one of the most common nervous system disorders affecting the elderly. The symptoms do vary in severity and it can affect many aspects of a patient's daily life. Medicines can help patients to cope with their symptoms and ultimately a collaborative effort is definitely required to help patients maintain as much independence as possible and also increase their quality of life. Thank you.